Thank you, thank you, delegates. As presiding officer of this Federal Congress, it is now my profound honor to announce a position of significant importance for our party and this country as the DA continues to grow and as our trajectory sets in onto the union buildings. This person will lead us into the all-important 2024 national elections. The federal leader of the Democratic Alliance is... Envelope, please.
Viva di e viva! Viva! Pambili di e pambili! Pambili! Forward to 2024, forward! Forward! Panzi corruption, panzi! Panzi! Panzi ANC, panzi! Panzi! Forward to the future, forward! Forward! Democrats, friends and two fellow South Africans watching at home, wherever you may be. I am humbled to stand before all of you today to answer the call that you have made during this historic Congress. And my answer to you is a resounding yes. Yes, I will work with each and every one of you to lead the DA into the national government in 2024. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But firstly, I want to thank all of those who contested positions in this Congress. We have elections in the DA that are run well, that don't end up with victors and vanquished, and always end up in the best interests of the DA. So to our opponents and all of the races, to all of those who may not get elected, let's work together to build this party and build a better future. I want to thank every DA delegate, every DA public representative, activist, member and supporter who has placed your trust in me to lead you as your federal leader for a second term. And I pledge to devote every fiber of my being to our shared destiny of boldly taking the DA into the future. In this quest, I will be joined by the rest of the DA's national leadership team that you have elected this weekend. To our federal chairman, deputy chairs, federal council chairwoman, and to her deputies, congratulations. I look forward to working closely with all of you as well as with our amazing provincial, regional, and local leadership teams to take our party to even greater heights. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge the people who often make the greatest sacrifices in the DA's quest to save South Africa. And I'm sure that every person in this room can attest that the DA would never have been grown to become the party that we know today without the unwavering support of each of our families. <laughs> to my family, my wife Terry and my three beautiful daughters, Ashley, Caroline and Olivia, thank you for supporting me and uplifting me along every step of this journey. It is from your unending love that I find the courage to persevere even when the times get tough. Thank you. <laughs> Democrats, throughout this campaign, I've told you that 2024 is going to be about the DA's moonshot election. Now, while the term moonshot originally meant a long shot, it is increasingly being used to describe a monumental effort and a lofty goal. In other words, a giant leap forward. A leap like ensuring that the DA leads the national government in 2024. And like the original mission to take humans to the moon, we take this shot to defeat the ANC and to keep the EFF out, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Since 2019, we've been working on the first phase of that project. This phase was all about stabilizing and fixing the DA so that we could get back to winning ways on our way to taking our moonshot. It was about rebuilding internal cohesion. It was about discipline, systems, and policy. And as we look back to 2019 today, I can confidently say that this phase was a success. The DA that emerges from this Congress is more united 
more confident about the future of the party than at any time I can remember. We have indeed built a strong DA. Yet, as one phase of the journey to our 2024 moonshot ends, so another begins today. This is a phase where we reposition our strong DA to build a better future. In this new phase, the DA and our country will face some of the greatest opportunities, but also some of the greatest risks in our democratic history. The realistic prospect of bringing the ANC below 50% in the next year's national election presents a moment to all of us to radically reshape South Africa and our politics. But it will also be up to us to determine whether this will be for the better. Or whether this next era in our country's history will be even worse than ANC domination. And while it feels to so many of us like South Africa has hit rock bottom, there is one unfortunate truth in politics, and that is that things can always get worse. And there is one risk that above all else threatens the future of both my family and yours. And that is the increasingly realistic prospect of an alliance between the ANC and the EFF taking power next year. Given the fact that the ANC now officially co-governs with the EFF in parts of Gauteng, we need to start taking the threat of these parties ganging up to destroy our country in 2024 very, very seriously. And I want to be unequivocal about the DA's view on this. The day that an ANC EFF government takes over, it will be doomsday for South Africa. And let me tell you, EFF doomsday will make the collapse of Zimbabwe look like a dress rehearsal. And it will leave all South Africans, black, colored, white and Indian, completely destitute and abandoned. And that is why, during the remaining months before next year's election, the DA will also make it our number one priority and do absolutely everything in our power to prevent an ANC-EFF doomsday coalition from taking power. Over the past 30 years, the ANC has proven itself to be the opponent of progress in our country. But make no mistake, the EFF is its enemy. The EFF Doomsday Coalition will expropriate property without compensation and abolish private property rights. The EFF Doomsday Coalition will nationalize and destroy foreign banks, investments, mines and other investments in the country. The EFF Doomsday Coalition will plunge this country into ethnic and racial conflict, the likes of which has never been witnessed before. And the cold, hard truth is that the Doomsday Coalition between the ANC and the EFF has already taken over Johannesburg and Ekuleni with the help of its little proxies. Next year, it will be knocking on the doors of the Union buildings, right next door from us in Pretoria. This fact should send a shiver down the spines of every patriot and every freedom-loving person in this country. But fortunately, there is one, and only one, insurance policy against the ANC-EFF Doomsday Coalition, and that is to vote for the Democratic Alliance. Because the DA is the only party that's big enough and strong enough to stop Julius Malema. The DA is the only party with the size, the resources and the track record to oppose and defeat the Doomsday Coalition. And for proof, look no further than the action that we took against the chaos that the EFF threatened to unleash during their so-called national shutdown. It was the DA that took decisive legal steps and mobilized our thousands of branches all across this country to stop the EFF dead 
in their tracks. And today, I publicly declare Julius Malema's EFF to be political enemy number one of the Democratic Alliance. And I commit the DA to fight back against the EFF at every turn, with the ultimate aim of defeating the doomsday coalition that could seal South Africa's fate next year. This is no longer about politics, Democrats. It's about the survival of democracy and the survival of South Africa. Throughout this period of, leadership, of this leadership campaign, I have reflected deeply upon the risk of the EFF coming to power and the demands that this places on the DA. I approach this question in my capacity as leader of the Democratic Alliance, carefully considering what we need to do to maximize our party support in next year's election. But I also approached it in another way, a way that is demanded of me by our country's constitution. In Clause 57, our constitution recognizes, and I quote, the leader of the largest opposition party in parliament as the leader of the opposition, unquote. Now, it's a clause that may not be known by many people, but it is one that has profound implications for our moonshot we are about to take to defeat the prospect of an ANC and EFF coalition. As the person duly elected to lead not only the DA, but to also serve as a constitutionally recognized leader of the opposition, I had to consider the way forward, not only for our party, but also for the broader opposition cause. And I have come to the conclusion, fellow Democrats and fellow citizens, that our party has arrived at our Clause 57 moment. And this is the moment that we fully embrace Clause 57 of our Constitution to acknowledge that the DA is no longer just another political party. For the truth is that South Africans no longer expect the DA to be an opposition party only, let alone just one party among many. South Africans now expect us to step up and become the leader of the alternative government in South Africa. What they want and demand of us, above all else, is for the DA to unite all the forces in this country that stand opposed to the ANC and the EFF. What they want is for the DA to lead, and lead is what we shall do. I ask you simply to look at the ANC for an example of what happens when a leader lacks the courage to put South Africa ahead of narrow political interests. Cyril Ramaphosa constantly puts the ANC ahead of South Africa. He even openly admits that he would, and I quote, rather be seen as a weak president than to divide the ANC, unquote. And it is because of this mindset that our nation is rotten with cadre deployment, infected with corruption, and dying from maladministration. And it is because of this mindset that the ANC has embraced the EFF as a coalition partner in Gauteng. Because, you see, for the ANC, politics has become more important than the people. But I'm proud to say that the DA is different. We recognize that if we are to achieve our moonshot, to remove the ANC from power and to keep the EFF out, we will need to think and act in bold new ways. We recognize that one simply cannot achieve something that has never been done before by acting the same way that you've always acted before. And above all else, we recognize that now is the time for the DA to become the leader of the alternative that will change our country for the better, as Clause 57 demands of us. And in the interest of doing what Sir Ramaphosa cannot, of rising above petty partisan politics, of putting South Africa first and keeping the ANC EFF Doomsday Coalition out, I can today make the following announcement. In my capacity as leader, not only of the DA, but of the opposition alternative in our country, our party will immediately initiate a process to form a pre-election moonshot pact 
with like-minded political parties, civil society organizations, and civic movements to defeat the ANC, to keep the EFF out, and to inaugurate a new national opposition coalition government. This invitation is broad and generously open to the leaders of all civil society bodies and opposition parties that are, as a matter of principle, opposed to the ANC and the EFF. But it excludes all parties and organizations who've tethered themselves to the rotting carcass of the ANC. The purpose of this pact will to be forge coordination and unity of purpose between all organizations that want to defeat the ANC and keep the EFF out. To achieve this moonshot, we need a whole of society approach that builds an entirely new ecosystem of change in our country. The pact's purpose will also be to sit around the table to agree on the rules of engagement that will enable different organizations to retain their own identities while bringing an end to the petty squabbles and division that only benefits the ANC. <laughs> Democrats, it's not going to be enough to save South Africa if we just drag the ANC to just below 50%, as it will leave them with too many avenues to stay in power, including through a doomsday coalition with the EFF. But let me be clear, it will also not be enough to form an impotent, unstable minority coalition at a national level. Our experience in places like Johannesburg and Ekuleni teaches us that minority coalitions that cannot reach 51% are inherently unstable. And the DA has no interest in destabilizing South Africa through an unworkable minority coalition. What this means is that this moonshot pact must work together to reach the mark of 51% so that we can defeat the ANC and its proxies and keep the EFF out. It is in pursuit of this goal that the DA takes the bold and unprecedented step to now lead a united opposition moonshot pact. As the name suggests, we're all well aware that this is an ambitious goal but it is nonetheless a goal worth pursuing. Because in the DA, we are patriots who love South Africa above all else. And we, because we realize that the mission to save our country from the ANC and its doomsday coalition with the EFF is now urgent. South Africa simply does not have another five years to watch opposition parties squabble amongst themselves about whose bucket of water is colder while the entire house is on fire. Now, colleagues, I realize that this is a significant moment, and I therefore want to briefly address, in turn, the leaders of other opposition parties, the members of Congress gathered here today, and most importantly, the people of South Africa. To the leaders of like-minded opposition parties, I say to you, it's time for a reset. So keep an eye on your inboxes, you will soon receive a letter from my office asking whether you are prepared to join the process of forming the Moonshot Pact. In all sincerity and with all candor, I say to you, we can all continue doing our own things separately and see where the chips fall after voting day in 2024. But hope is not a strategy. And in the past, it has been precisely the lack of opposition, unity, and its infirmity of strategy and tactics, which has allowed the ANC to divide us and rule over us with the ruin now plain in sight for all to see. Or we, along with civil society leaders and concerned patriots who don't want to walk one more miserable inch down this ANC road to ruin, can choose to charter another path. So let's meet soon at a national convention for the Moonshot Pact, at a time and place where all historic enmity is left outside the door of the venue. I make this proposal to you as a newly re-elected leader of my party. If we're going to make this Moonshot Pact work, it must be an initiative 
that is actually led by the leaders of all partner parties. We have learned from hard experience that agents or entourages sometimes push agendas that are at odds with the vision of the leader. So this, must form this formation must be strictly a leader's only initiative. Of course, a secretariat will be provided, but all of the negotiations and discussions must be handled by the party leaders themselves. There can be no more important job for any opposition leader in South Africa at this time than this mission of a moonshot pact. Let our meeting reach common cause on how we can answer the most difficult yet essential question of all. How can the opposition forces and their leaders ensure that the mightiest possible offer is placed before voters next year to change the face of our government and the fate of our country? And that surely is a question worth answering a challenge worth facing, and an alternative worth creating. Each party that signs up to our pact should be guided by one central question only. What are we doing to grow the non-EFF opposition vote from the 32% that pertained in 2019 to the 51% we need in 2024? <laughs> Next to my party, I want to say that we should all understand that there are two complementary, not contradictory issues at play here. As DA leaders, I ask members of this Congress to go out there and win each and every vote that is available to our party. All available polling tells us that on a good day, the ANC is now only 12, we are, the DA is now only 12% behind the ANC. We are consistently polling in the high 20s and on the there are some days the ANC drops below 40%. I sincerely believe that we can close that 12% gap and overtake the ANC to become the single biggest political party in South Africa by the time the 2024 election rolls around. We are, after all, already the single biggest party in urban South Africa. This means that we govern a number of places, including the Western Cape, with an outright majority. And the fact is, where we have outright majorities, the DA has demonstrated that we govern better than any coalition has ever done. Every objective metric attests to this basic fact. The Western Cape has by far the lowest unemployment in South Africa. It delivers better quality services to the poorest among us, including education and healthcare, than any other province. In the DA-led Western Cape, roads are free from potholes, refuse is collected on time, water is safe to drink and always available, and over 1,100 law enforcement officers have been deployed to fight violent crime because the National Police Service cannot. The Western Cape, as well as municipalities with outright DA majorities, like Cape Town, are also going to be the first places in this country that end load shedding for good. And Democrats, it's this message we must take to voters, that voting DA is the best way to secure a better future for you and your family. Don't only tell them what the DA will do, show them what we are already doing. But most importantly, show them that the DA cares. Show them that the DA is the only party fighting to reduce the cost of living so that poor households can feed their families. Show them that the DA is leading the battle to end CADA deployment and the obscene abuse of the ministerial handbook. Show them that it is the DA that will protect their social grants by getting our country onto a sustainable economic path. Show them that only the DA is fighting to keep the EFF out. That way voters don't only have to believe what we say, they only have to, through their own eyes, see that when people vote DA, and give us outright majorities, life gets better. So even as we move towards a national coalition government, we must absolutely retain our majority in the Western Cape and ensure that we win outright majorities wherever they are within reach, including in this province, Gauteng. But as the leader of the opposition, I also know that the DA needs coalitions for the time being if we want to take power at a national level, as we must. 
And the truth is that we can only become the biggest political party in this country if all other non-EFF voters, including those who may not be DA voters, turn out on election day to drive down the ANC's percentage. Finally, I want to speak to the voters of South Africa. And I know that many of you remain skeptical of coalitions. And this is completely understandable given the way in which fragmentation and side switching by certain parties has undermined the stability of some of these governments. And it is precisely because we've learned some very hard lessons that the DA is now taking the lead to form a pre-election moonshot pact. By getting different parties to make a public and transparent commitment to the pact and the values it will be built on well in advance of next year's election, we hope to provide greater certainty to opposition voters than was the case before the 2021 election. It's also because we've learned from past experience that we've introduced legislative changes to make sure coalitions work better. But I do also want to point out that there are inspiring examples of successful cooperation between parties that I hope will then guide our moonshot pact. And the first comes from KwaZulu-Natal, where a pact between the DA and the IFP has seen us collectively take more wards off the ANC than ever before. In some cases where it's made sense, the DA abstained from particular by-elections and encouraged our voters to tactically vote for the IFP. In other cases, where the opposite is the case, the IFP has done the same for us. And the result of this mature cooperation is that the DA and IFP together are systematically becoming bigger than the sum of our parts in KwaZulu-Natal. Another positive example comes from the Western Cape where the DA, the Freedom Front Plus, and the local, local Cedarburg Easter Community Party have tactically cooperated to win enough by-elections to remove the ANC and its proxies from power in that entire municipality. And I want to thank all of the Democrats who are involved by showing us what can be done when we work together, defeating the ANC and keeping the EFF out. Democrats, our sweet victory in Chwane that saw Silius Brink take up a seat after the ANC and EFF tried every dirty trick in the book has created an opportunity to demonstrate what we can do when we stand united. Democrats, patriots and fellow South Africans, this is the DA's vision for 2024 to keep the ANC out and keep the EFF out. It's a vision of a reinvigorated DA that closes the gap with the ANC as we grow our support to unprecedented levels. It's also a vision that of a DA that works closely and constructively with our partners in the Moonshot Pact to ensure that collectively we reach the 51% we mark we need to form a government. And Democrats, with the DA at its core, this is a government that will end load shedding. It is a government that will bring unemployment below 20%. It is a government that will halve violent crime. It's a government that will defeat cadre deployment. It's a government that will devolve more powers over many things to capable local and provincial government. This vision is the first prize, both of the DA and for our struggling country. But Democrats, putting South Africa first also means that we must be honest about the profound risks we face if the doomsday coalition comes to power. And there's only one way out. There's only one way to help the moonshot pact reach for the stars while simultaneously guarding against the doomsday coalition that is destroying our country. And that way is to vote for the DA. In 2024, a vote for the DA is not only a vote for a strong and stable party to anchor the Moonshot Pact, it is simultaneously a vote to stop the EFF doomsday from engulfing us all. At this election, a vote for the DA will embody our shared hopes for the future while also guarding against our greatest fears. Fellow South Africans, our country has entered an era of profound uncertainty and there simply are no guarantees. But this also means that the future is all to play for. 
and it will ultimately be up to the people of South Africa to decide whether our country goes down in flames under the ANC EFF Doomsday Coalition or whether the DA and our partners in the Moonshot Pact give our country its best shot at redemption. So, to the 14 million registered voters who did not turn up to vote in 2021, and to the millions more across the country who are not registered at all, I say to you, your country's future is now in your hands. If you say you're not interested in politics, I say to you that politics will be very interested in you and all you hold dear if the EFF comes to power. So let's not wait until it's too late. Let's use our hard-earned democracy to save our beloved country while we still can. So, if you're not registered to vote, please visit the IEC website today. It takes only a few minutes of your time to register and make sure that you can play your part next year to keep the EFF out and to give hope a chance. If you're already registered, I call on you to check your details are correct and to make sure that you and your family turn up on election day. In 2024, the people of South Africa need to vote DA like their lives depend on it. <laughs> Democrats, we've built a stronger DA and this Congress has shown us that. Now let's kickstart this blue machine to provide a better future for my family, for your family, and for every South African family. We don't have a moment to lose. It's time to get out there, to hit the ground running, and to save our beautiful country. South Africa is a wonderful place, and she's worth the fighting for. Let's get out there, Democrats, and make it happen. The road to 2024 starts here.